Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Terry. And we're Escaping, Escaping the, the Empty Nest. Nest. We wouldn't have planned a trip to Boston unless we were excited to finally see the sites from American history that we both grew up reading about. Names like Paul Revere, John Adams, John Hancock, Sam Adams, and Crispus Attucks were names we were all familiar with. But 25 years ago, Terry and I saw a video on the History Channel called The Hidden History of Boston that showed us just how incomplete and frankly flawed our education had been. We knew someday we had to get to Boston to see it for ourselves, but in 1996, we had a newborn baby boy, so that trip would have to wait. By the time we finally made it, we were over 50 and not in the best shape. So we were a little intimidated at the thought of spending an entire day or two doing nothing but walking all over an entire city. Would we be able to make it without breaking it up into several days? I'm very pleased to say the answer is yes. Despite starting in Boston Common after breakfast, we saw everything in the downtown area and the North End in one day, but we saved Old Ironsides and the Bunker Hill for the next day. So let's talk about what we saw. The Freedom Trail starts in America's oldest public park, Boston Common. That's right, common, not commons. It was founded in 1634. Its designation as an official park dates back to the 1830s, but one could make the case it's actually the first official urban park in the world. Several of the features that gave it park status had been established over 100 years earlier. We enjoyed walking around the park and were considering joining a tour group, but instead we were very pleased with what we found at the Visitor Center. A selection of detailed tour books that gave us all the information we needed, but let us go at our own pace. The books were very reasonably priced, and I think we paid $8 for ours. It has maps and details on everything we needed and more. Right next to Boston Common is the Massachusetts State House. It serves as the state capital for the Commonwealth, it was completed in 1798, and the Golden Dome is actually copper that was installed by Paul Revere himself to prevent leakage, but it's been gilded with gold leaf since 1874, except for a time during World War II when it was painted gray to prevent reflection during blackouts and to protect the city and building from bombing attacks. Getting to all of the sites on the Freedom Trail is easy. Anytime you see a red brick stripe on the sidewalk, you're on the trail. It of course helps to start in the common so you don't miss anything, but you can really start or stop anywhere you want. It literally could not be easier. One of the most popular stops on the trail is any of the many burial grounds. Here you will find the graves of Sam Adams, Paul Revere, John Hancock, the victims of the Boston Massacre, Peter Faneuil, and many, many others. There's a large obelisk for Benjamin Franklin's parents, but the man himself is actually buried in Philadelphia. So I can imagine that causes some confusion for tourists not armed with a guidebook. Another thing that isn't clear to most tourists at all is that the headstones don't match up with where the bodies are buried at. Even though there are just 2,300 headstones, there are actually over 12,000 bodies buried here. Because of a limitation of space, bodies were buried four people deep, and before renovations took place, sometimes bones were visible above the surface. One more thing about this burial ground. Because of the size of the tour groups that swarm the city, there may be a costume tour guide planting himself and 30 other people around Paul Revere's grave marker for 10 minutes or more while they do their spiel, keeping anyone else from getting close to it. If that happens to you, just visit other parts of the burial ground until they clear the area. There isn't a set order that you have to visit each grave. From there, we went to King's Chapel, which dates back to 1754. Right next door is Boston's oldest burial ground. What's ironic about it is that many of the original Puritan settlers were buried here and they would be rolling over in their graves if they knew that 50 years after they died, an Anglican church would be built practically on top of them. Because this is the Church of England, the same church they came here to escape. John Winthrop would probably be the most indignant. He was the first Puritan leader and the first governor of the Massachusetts colony. Also buried here is William Dawes, the man that actually did most of the midnight ride that was credited to Paul Revere by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow in the famous poem. I guess William Dawes either needed a more poetic name or a better publicist. As for inside the King's Chapel, it's very ornate. It's still a functional church, even with the antique pew boxes. These were reserved for services for family groups and upper crust members of the community. The coveted pew number 30 is the governor's pew. 
It was occupied by George Washington on October 27, 1789. So I asked Terry, hey, did you get a picture of Chipotle? And then I said, I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. But this is actually a significantly important building. It's funny to see some of the things that are historic things that are now in uh, commonplace things. Like, like Chipotle. <laughs> like Ruth's Chris inside the uh, old date house or whatever that was. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Chipotle there, and really, really, I guess it's good that they're reusing it, but hopefully it's being historically better. Right. A little surprised that all these places you have to pay to get into individually. I guess they do it to raise money for maintenance, but it can kind of exp be expensive if you want to get into every little building. Yeah. You know, $5 here, $15 here. It adds up just for the two of us. I can imagine what some of you would be if they were coming in with a family. Yeah. Even though the kids' prices do seem quite a bit lower. Not $15 for kids, too. The Old State House is one of those iconic locations that is one of the highlights of the trail. Built in 1713, it's the oldest surviving public building in Boston. In 1770, the Boston Massacre occurred right in front of it. On July 18th of 1776, the Declaration of Independence had its first public reading from the East Balcony. It also served as the state capitol building until the Massachusetts State House was completed. For the next 100 years, the building served many different uses from government to commercial and eventually fell into disrepair. There was talk of demolition. The Bostonian Society was formed to preserve and protect the old state house as well as other buildings in the area and it was saved. Shockingly enough, many visitors to Boston that enter by way of the subway get off at the State Street Station, not knowing that the building they are exiting on is one of the most historic buildings in the entire country. As for the inside, there is a great museum dedicated to the Revolutionary War, including a section on the Boston Massacre. From the second floor window, you can see the view from the famous balcony. There's also been a sample of the tea that got trapped in a cuff from the Boston Tea Party Raid. From there, you're probably going to be ready for a bite to eat, so don't forget to check out Quincy Market. This building is almost 200 years old and for most of its existence served as the main stop for purchasing produce, meat, and anything else the residents of that area needed. More recently, it's been converted into a massive food court. You can get anything here from pastries to pizza, from lobster rolls to enchiladas. There's an upstairs seating area or you can sit outside and watch entertainers perform. Next to the market is the famous Faneuil Hall, built in 1740. It was the site of several speeches by Samuel Adams, James Otis, and others encouraging independence from Great Britain. Since then, it has been a host to countless political meetings and town halls, and in 1992, the building was restored to its original appearance. From there, we took the Orange Line train to the North Station to see everything on the north side, and then work our way back to our hotel near the Old State House. The first place we visited was the Copse Hill Burial Ground, the city's second oldest burial ground founded in 1659. Copse doesn't have many commonly recognizable people laid to rest here, but it doesn't mean it's not worth a visit. For example, check out the pock marks on this headstone of Daniel Malcolm. They were from British musket balls. It seems this son of liberty was also a smuggler who once snuck 60 casks of wine past the British and the British soldiers never forgot it. When they were camped out at the cemetery during the Battle of Bunker Hill, they took turns using Malcolm's headstone for target practice. From there, it was a short walk to the Old North Church. That's right, as in, one if by land, two if by sea. Even though the legend of Paul Revere is partially fiction, the lantern lighting really did happen and it's worth a stop on the Freedom Trail. The church is still an active Episcopal congregation. One interesting item on display is the bust of George Washington. It may not look like the portraits we're familiar with, but in 1824, revolutionary hero General Lafayette reportedly remarked that it was the best likeness of the first president he had ever seen. The North Church will celebrate its 300th anniversary in 2023, and it still looks amazing. From there, the Freedom Trail markers take you right through Little Italy, where we stopped off to try some of Boston's best bakeries, and our video detailing that search will be coming out soon. Our last stop of the day was going to be Paul Revere's house, but we got there a little late to go inside, so we sat across the street and sampled cannolis. 
It was nice to see the house, but when this house was restored, it was restored to a point 100 years earlier than Revere lived in it, which meant removing an entire floor that he himself added to house some of his 16 kids. So we were fine with not going inside. It had been a long day, but it was time to head back to the hotel and rest up for tomorrow when we would take the Charlestown Ferry to see the USS Constitution and Bunker Hill. That video is coming soon, so either check back or look at our Boston playlist for all of the videos we're going to put out to detail our trip. We hope this video has helped you in some way, and if you've been to the Freedom Trail, share with us your favorite part in the comments. Thanks for watching, and bye, bye for now. now.